Hey guys, I just wanted to jump on real quick before the video you're about to see and uh, just let you know that um, you are going to see some variations in the exposure on the vlog that's coming up. Um, you know what, I'm not going to reshoot it. I was out here and I don't normally shoot this early in the morning and uh, man, the sunlight really changed. So I do what I always do. I set my exposure and then I locked it off so it didn't sort of change as I moved my hands around and um, the sun came up and it got a lot of brighter. So uh, pardon the variations in exposure. I want to get this vlog up and if I jump into my editing software and start trying to match the brightness across the thing dynamically, uh, my OCD will kick in and you will not see this video for days. Uh, obviously if it was a commercial shoot we would fix it but uh, it's not, it's for you guys. And I want to get back to the point where I shoot and put it up. So uh, if for whatever reason you are really buff by random uh, minor exposure changes as we go, or if you're a filmmaker or professional videographer and this is going to hurt you, uh, consider this a trigger warning for uh, exposure changes. Okay, I hope you enjoy the vlog. Uh, settle in, get some coffee or lunch. It's about 15 minutes long and I hope you enjoy it. Hey, what's up, Modern Samurai viewers? We are out here in the park. And it's Wednesday morning. I figured I would take a second. I had to go out and do some stuff to just sort of update you on where we are. I had done an update over the weekend, um, but by the time I got around to editing and getting it up, I you know it seemed a little stale. So I figured I would talk to you again this morning. You have to pardon the road noise a little bit. What I wanted to talk about was some feedback I've got um, through the Ghost Dog Alpha site and through my last vlog here. And basically I had some people, uh, consultant types and people who kind of wonder how uh, solopreneur consultants sort of live. And they were wondering about sort of marketing and how I, how I do the marketing for getting consulting clients and how that stuff works. And what I wanted to do was sort of talk to you about the way I do it. Now, a lot of other entrepreneurs, a lot of other consultants are gonna do their work a different way. This is just how I choose to do it. There's basically a couple ways to do this, but you can think of them as uh, sort of hard sell and soft sell. So the hard sell consultant is, um, you know, his website is gonna talk a lot about availability and rates and, you know, contact me with your project and there will be an estimator and uh, a way to schedule phone calls and so think of it that way think of it as a very active sort of um, you know I'm a consultant hire me that's what I do um, thing and I've done that in my in my life and it works it's not a bad way to do things and if that's your you know that's working for you and fitting with your personality and whatever at the time there's the internet is full of resources on how to go ahead and do that um, I particularly like uh, something called the copywriting course, and that's with a K, K-O-P-Y, uh, copywriting course by the guys over at um, AppSumo is the website, A-P-P-S-U-M-O. It might be a little expensive now. I got it when it was on sale a while back, but it has a pretty good guide to writing entertaining and interesting hard sell ad copy. You might find, you might find value there. Um, for me, I've been working with uh, basically the same network of people. You'll have to pardon that shake. I've been working with the same network of people for a long time. It grows, it ebbs and flows, but basically the way I get work usually is I will, you know, someone I know will recommend me for a position on a team um, doing a job, usually between a couple weeks and three or four months long. Um, I will go do that job, I'll go do that work and meet some people, some very cool people while I'm doing that work. And then we break, you know, it's in the nature of what we're doing that everybody sort of scatters. And some of those people are permanent employees of the client I worked for. And some of them are consultants just like me. The permanent employees um, stay, but when the next time that company has a job to do, that permanent employee usually remembers the team that got the last one done and maybe, um, remembers that we were good at what we do and they, they hire us again. So then you wind up getting repeat work at that same client. But what else happens is the people you worked with scatter and you work with a lot of people in this business, but not everybody is somebody you wanna work with again. I don't mean they're bad people. I just mean for any given project, it's like that thing at the beginning of Mission Impossible where it's like, you know, here's what we need somebody to do. And you're like, oh, okay, I need, 
I need somebody who speaks Russian. I need somebody who goes and does this. I need somebody who goes and does that. And I know this guy, and there was this guy who was on with this last project. He's really good at solving this kind of a problem. Whereas that other guy who I really liked working with, maybe this isn't the best fit for him. So you kind of rifle through that mental Rolodex and you pick the people you know that you've worked with that were reliable and smart and intelligent. And then you make your recommendations because at least half of this job in development is being able to recommend people for teams. And so, you know, then they remember that they worked with you maybe on another contract, maybe with a previous employer or maybe when they were a contractor and then they give you a call and they're like, hey, are you free? And you know, it sort of snowballs. So it's all connections to connections to connections to people you know, for me. Now, you have to play your part in that. Not only is it the right thing to do, but professionally, it makes all the sense in the world for what you are gonna do is so when somebody reaches out to you and says, hey, do you, you know, over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna need somebody to do this thing. Do you wanna do this thing? And if you're not interested or you have to take a pass or maybe the, the budget isn't what you need it to be or maybe you're too busy on another project or maybe just at the moment you're kind of taking a little time and you're not interested in that taking a project right then, it's important that you flip through your mental Rolodex and go, you know, I'm not gonna work for this job this time but remember that guy, Rob, I worked with or we worked with on that project, whatever. If you haven't reached out to Rob, I've been keeping in touch with him in this Slack room or this Discord room or we've been on Skype. Um, and reach out to him. I saw a blog post by him that he's working on this thing and I think it's right up his alley. And you, you need to be part of a network. You can't just be the node at the end who receives information. You have to position yourself Again, not only is it the right thing to do, not only is it the smart way um, to help others while helping yourself, right? That's enlightened self-interest. That's what this is. But professionally, it makes all the sense in the world because what happens is people call you. Now, let's say somebody calls you like three times in a row and you can't do the job. Well, you know what? They stop calling you. Oh, I've called Ken a couple of times. It doesn't work out, he's busy, he's whatever. So you know what, I'm just not gonna put him on my list of people to call. Whereas, if it's a positive experience for them, if they still got value out of giving you your that call, then they're still gonna call you towards the top of the list because you can make their lives easier. So you know what, hey, the last couple of times I called Ken, he couldn't do the project, but he turned me on to a really good guy or he heard a little bit about the project and gave me an idea for a technology. Um, that's why if somebody hits me up, and they're like, hey, we're doing this thing and here's how we're thinking about doing it. Are you interested? If I think that I may have something to contribute, you know, even though it might be stepping out of line just a little bit, I'll say, hey, have you considered, you know, I'm not right for this, but you might consider finding somebody who's good with this technology. And sometimes you get an email back and they're like, hey, I know you weren't on the contract. I know we weren't paying you, but your idea was awesome and thanks. And that's why you should always be there when somebody reaches out to you um, with a problem. Don't be... Like, hey, where am I gonna get my hours worth of money from? I get hit up all the time by people I know. And I hit others up all the time in Skype or in Discord or through email or you get a quick phone call or a text message. And it's like, hey, I'm on the job doing this thing and I ran into this problem. Do you have a couple minutes? And I'm like, sure. You know what, if it's not gonna evaluate an NDA, fill me in a little bit and I'll help you. If it is, if you can't tell me about what you're actually doing, if you can whip together a, a parallel that you can talk to get me about, then hit me up and I'll, I'll hit you back. So there's word of mouth networking is critically important. And then to expand your network, me, I make content. So these vlogs, not only are they interesting and personal, but this is part of, of me marketing and expanding my network um, to be more, um, to sort of be bigger and more well known. It helps me build authority. It helps me build um, credibility. So there are going to be people watching this video right now about how entrepreneurs work and how networking works and uh, how valuable it is to be able to help connect other people. And that's great information and I want you to all follow it. But on the flip side, somebody watching this video at some point is going to go, oh man, I really need a couple of guys for a project. Who can I call? And if they don't already know somebody, if they don't already have a Rolodex, maybe they're just starting out, they're going to reach out to me and they're going to go, hey, I saw your I saw your vlog entry and I think that was really cool. Uh, do you have anybody in mind? Or maybe you want to take the job. 
And you know what? If I'm not busy, maybe I will. That's how you expand. Um, I've done a series of vlogs about WordPress recently over on Ghost Dog Alpha. I'll be doing some more. I've gotten uh, client inquiries based on that thought. those thoughts on WordPress. They're like, hey, we like what you said about WordPress. We're considering a WordPress project. What do you think about what we're doing? So in a social media world more than any other time, there's value in just being open and honest and helping other people um, share what you're doing, share your information. Don't be stingy with your recommendations. Don't don't be all, you know, hey, um, I'm going to just not, you know, I'm not going to give work to my competition or if they're not going to hire me, they're not going to then screw them. I'm not going to give them any information. But look, if you can't afford me or if you can't meet my terms or if um, something goes wrong about that, then I'm going to help you out. I'm going to hand you to somebody else. And that's that's critical, you know, and do that even sometimes if it looks like it's taking food out of your mouth. You know what I mean? Like maybe you're at 80% capacity and maybe there's a job coming in that you might be able to, to sneak in, but I don't know, it's a little iffy. Don't risk those relationships for that. Let that work go. You know, it might cost you financially in the short run, but a botched project because you were too egotistical to hand the work off to somebody else, that's just ridiculous. If you know somebody who's got some spare capacity and that project can really be handled easily, maybe suggest splitting the work between you and them. Maybe suggest to the client, hey, maybe instead of just hiring me, hire me, I'll bring this guy on under me, so you only have to manage me, you only have to work with me, I know you don't want to add complexity, but I'm going to split the work with them, I'm going to subcon subcontract with them, and we'll get it done for you, and give away some of that money, give away some of that money so that your customer has a fantastic experience, so that the people in your network get a chance to do a little work, so that you um, continue to be a good person to work with, and give the people around you good experiences, it just it makes great business sense. It's good for everybody concerned. Um, your life will be better. You know, giving up a little bit of work, but but knowing that you did the right thing, knowing that the people around you enjoy working with you, that will, I don't know, if you're anything like me, not only will you sleep better at night, um, not only will it be more profitable in the long run, not only will your business thrive, but it's just right. It's the right thing to do. And for those of you who follow the fact that um, I'm an objectivist that I talk about Ayn Rand all the time. This philosophy is perfectly in keeping with objectivism. I know that the uninitiated and the people who haven't read it or the people who never bothered to understand it or the people who never bothered to look deeply, um, they will look at this and they'll go, oh, but you're giving away money and it's, you know, objectivism is selfish. No, objectivism is making sure you're doing what's right for you but on a strategic level, objectivism is all about the rejection of minute-to-minute -minute emotional decision-making in favor of strategic choice. Giving away work when I need to or when it's not the right job for me, that's strategic. There's nothing better than that. And this is how objectivism works. This is how I can do good for the people around me simply by doing the right thing for me as long as I'm defining that in a rational an intelligent way instead of emotional, emotionally just going me, 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 every dollar I can get, every contract I can get, nobody gets a contract but me, ah. That's not, that's not objectivism. That's just childish, emotionally driven behavior and that's not any of the things we talked about. So anyway, that's how objectivism fits in with um, network-based solopreneurship. That's why um, I give a lot of work away. That's why I don't take work I can't handle. That's why I'm willing to be flexible on a price. Um, if somebody calls me up and they're in trouble and they're like, hey, I, I can, you know, I can handle this budget. Maybe it's a little smaller than I like, but you know what? Sometimes you got to do that job. You do it and then you give it to, then you, you, you know, they had a good experience and then you're like, hey, let me change that uh, exposure a little bit. You know, and you're like, hey, this is going to be the right answer. Um, I want to go ahead and do this job for him. It's only a week or two. It's only a little bit less money. Um, and, and everybody's going to have a good experience from it. Now, the flip side of that is that they have to, you know, if you do that for somebody and then they take advantage of you. And every time they talk to you in the future, they're like, uh, oh, hey, by the way, 
I know your your thing is X, but you know I'm only going to bid you at Y. Well, then they're taking advantage of you as well, and that then then that's on them, and you don't take that job, and you you're very cautious about taking their calls in the future. So this is a bunch of people doing what's right for themselves, but but doing it in a way that's right for them in the long run, and right right for the people around them as much as they can. So okay, I am going to wrap this up. I hope you guys had a good. Um, I hope you guys had a good video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry about the little exposure stuff as we've been talking. The the sun's come up, so what can I tell you? Um, all right, I will talk to you guys later. Go check out uh, Ghost Dog Alpha, G H O S T D O G A L P H A dot com. Go check me out on LinkedIn. There will be a link down at the bottom. By all means, reach out to me. Um, if you're looking for people or you want a recommendation about somebody or you just want to you know, run by some of your technology choices or whatever, uh, you know, hit me up. As you can tell, I'm more than happy to talk to you. And if, if, if it's not going to work out for us to talk, then I'll try and pass you on to somebody else or whatever. So there's the one little bit of hard sell that you're going to get from me this, this video. Take it easy. I hope you have a great day. And we will talk again before the weekend. We got a ton of stuff coming up. Bye-bye.